Hello everyone, this is Tim again, and uh, it's time to get started with some CSS exercises. We're still kind of in our in introductory uh, stage here, so hopefully you've got the sample files, and if you don't have the sample files, you can get them out of Blackboard. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I'll try to post those somewhere uh, on my other website. Oh, actually, no, I, I do have them somewhere. Let, just a sec, let me just get you there. Um, so if you don't have the sample files, uh, you can go to our website, which is www.uen.org, and down here under um, my.uen, I'm sorry, no, not there. Over uh, on the right-hand side of this first page, there is a section, a link here that says Educator Search. It's in this quick links area. So type that in, and if you just put in my name, which is Tim Stack, S-T-C-K, and click Search Database, that will take you to my, my UEM page, and the sample files are available there. So if you look across the top, there is a Sample Files tab, and there is the only thing on this page right now is this Dreamweaver Part 3 sample route. So um, these f these tutorials and these files are part of an online class uh, that we're doing for teachers in Utah. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you're more than welcome to use those sample files and follow along. Okay, so I downloaded those sample files and I have set that. I downloaded them, it's a zip file, unzipped it, and that file that was unzipped, I've set that as my root folder here in Dreamweaver. So if you haven't done that before, uh, I'm assuming if you're, if you're watching these tutorials, you've probably done that before. So under Site and New Site, and go through and define uh, your local root folder. Okay, so here are the files that come up. And I'm going to open up this example 01 file by double-clicking on it. And you can see it's just some simple uh, f formatting. Uh, basically um, a couple of H2 tags here, so that's an H2 tag, H2, let me split this so you can kind of see. Um, and uh, some paragraphs, so there's a paragraph, uh, a link here, a couple of paragraphs, uh, some links, so all I want to do is go through the basic process here of using CSS to make this semantic HTML page uh, look a little nicer. And that's what CSS is really for, to help uh, to help give us much more control over how our objects look. Okay, so uh, I need you to have the CSS styles panel open. And if that's not open or that tab is not available, you can look under the window menu and find all the tabs and panels um, there. So I just click that CSS styles panel. It opens over here and it is divided into two sections. You can see there's a little divider right there. So I wanted about halfway and I wanted to show all. I also, it's also nice to see down here the uh, your local files. All right, so I'm going to get started and uh, start writing some rules to make this one page look a little bit nicer. And uh, we'll just do some simple stuff first here. So as I come over here to the uh, CSS style panel, there's a button along the bottom, and I'm just going to click this new CSS rule, and it pops open my the dialog box that's going to help me uh, write these. Uh, write these rules. So um, I want to start off with um, redefining some tags. So on this page I've got h2 tags, I've got p tags, uh, h2 for the headings, the second level headings, p tags for the paragraphs, and a tags for these two links. So I want to uh, do that. I also have a body tag which controls the rest of the page. So um, I'm going to do the body tag first. So I just need to go find body. And so I'm going to I'm going to redefine this HTML HTML element. Uh, the, that's the body tag, and then I have to decide where it is that I'm going to write these rules down. Now you can see by default here it says it's going to write it down on this document only, which means it would show up in the head. These rules would be written down in the head of this document, and that works fine for just practicing. Um, but let's just uh, do it the way that it's most commonly done, is to write these all these rules that we're going to create, all these styles that we're going to create, we're going to write them on, in a separate file, in a separate document. 
um, a, a dot CSS document. Um, and it just keeps them separate, helps me manage them a little bit better. Okay, so I can open up this here and say that I want to write these down on a new style sheet file. And that, that file is not created yet, so when I click OK this first time, it wants to create that file. So I'm just going to write down these are my practice styles. Okay, and it'll automatically be a dot at CSS file, and it'll go. Uh, I just need to make sure it gets inside my local root folder. I'm going to just click save. Okay, so now this is the definition box we'll see from now on um, uh, that'll show up for us that lets us actually decide how we want things to look. So here's I'm redefining the body tag. So that I can change some of the defaults here. So some of the defaults in the body tag are this white background. So if I wanted to set that to be something different, I can go to background and uh, for now I'll just select kind of a light gray. I can click apply. See that go on the page. Um, this is also one of the places where I can start setting the um, default font. So if I don't want Times New Roman, I can switch here uh, to a different font. So I'm changing that to uh, Verdana. And notice there's a def uh, there's a nice little default there that uh, I, I'm going to use Verdana. If Verdana is not available, uh, use Geneva. And if Geneva is not available, use uh, uh, Sans Serif font. And you can see that there is an edit font list down here that allows me to create my own sets of defaults and access all the other fonts that are available. But you can see I can switch, Comic Sans, mm, no, I'm not going with that. Um, so I could try out some here just by selecting it and clicking Apply. All right, so that's um, good enough. I just want to set those, some basic defaults there. Some of the other things that the body tag does, notice there is a uh, left margin here. There are some default margins that show up. Um, that come as part of the body. So if you want to change those default margins, you can go to the box um, category and change those. So for instance, if I just say, hey, I want to zero all those out, click apply, and you'll see how that snaps right up to the corner. I'm just going to let the default happen right now, and uh, we'll worry about that later. OK, so that's all for the body uh, for, for in this document. Now let's go ahead and style these H two tags. Let's make those look a little bit nicer, look like they fit on, on the page a little bit better. And you can see over here now in the CSS styles panel, you can see I've got this um, practice styles.css created and I've got one rule written down. And if I look down in my local f folder in my files panel, you can see there's that CSS document. That's the document where this body rule has been written, and all the rest of the rules are going to get written right here as well. Um, in addition to that, if I need to look at that document, uh, Dreamweaver knows that now this HTML file, this example 01 HTML file, has uh, an associated file that goes with it, which is this CSS. So you can see it, so it, it keeps that open right there and there's a little HTML written right here in the head that says um, create a connection or a link between this HTML file and that .css file and it opened it up for me so if I want to see it I can select it right there and I can see what Dreamweaver is writing down. Okay, okay let's do the H2 tags. Alright, so um, one shortcut here is if I uh, highlight that or select that H2 tag and then go to this new st CSS rule button um, and tell it that I want to redefine a tag, it will automatically put that H2 in there for me because it was selected. But I have to switch from class to tag. And I just want to make sure I've got a setting here where I want it to be written down. Um, so right on that same CSS file. Okay, so H2, um, uh, you can see that it uh, the, the formatting right now for the H2 tags is just it makes the text larger, bolder, and creates a little, um, there's some spacing around it. So I'm going to leave this, the size and the boldness, but I think I want that text to be a different color. So under type here, I can come down to color because I want my headers to stand out a little bit and maybe match uh, my color scheme. So maybe I'll select this green color and you can see that applies. Uh, I'm going to go down to the
box here and uh, if I zero out the padding and zero out the margin um, that'll make sure they don't have any any default spacing that happens um, in this tag uh, that just comes up automatically. Also uh, one of the things that is common to do with these um, H tags is to put a border on them because the, uh, the H2 remember is a uh, block level element so if I were to say put a background color behind it here's how you can see if it's block level put a background color behind and well let's just put a little simpler color like white click apply and notice how that H2 tag it actually span it actually goes across the hook from side to side of the document so it covers a whole line that's the way you can tell that um, an object is a block level so with the block level elements um, I can put background color and I don't think I'm going to in this case uh, but I would like to put an underline on okay so if I go to type and I turn on the underline you can see how that underline goes just under the letters well I kind of like it to look more like a heading if that underline went all the way across so that's not what I'm going to use for the underline um, I can use the border to put on an underline so this border it, it goes all around all four it goes around that box that white um, box that I just turned on for a second but I don't want a border all the way around I just want a border on the bottom so I'll put a solid maybe three pixel wide and I'm gonna make this uh, whoops a different color uh, maybe white and now you can see how that looks different um, so that b the border does recognize this box or this block that this is a block level element um, so I think I'll leave that uh, for the uh, the formatting of my H2's now any future H2's that go on this page they'll automatically be formatted um, just like that okay so now um, the next thing I want to uh, write is a rule that helps me format what the paragraphs look like. So uh, I could click inside the paragraph and go to the new CSS rule, select tag. The P tag goes in there automatically. If it doesn't, you can always type it in or just open up the drop down. It's gonna we're gonna write this rule onto that style sheet. Okay, so this is for the paragraph. Um, so I think I want it the same font. Um, uh, there's not too much I want to change about um, the font but for instance if you did you think oh I decided I want my font to be red you can see how anywhere any text inside of a P tag becomes red or becomes whatever color you, you select I'm gonna go back to no color and that'll just be the default which happened to be black um, sometimes to make things a little easier to read um, you might change the line height a bit Okay, so that made the line height smaller. If I changed it to say 20, that line height starts to grow. And in certain cases, um, especially on the web, where we want to make text as easy to read as possible, I might change that line height um, to make these paragraphs a little easier to read. And if I just want the default, just leave that empty, and that becomes the default, or goes back to the default. Um, I think I would like these paragraphs to be uh, uh, indented a little bit and so I'm going to go to the box now paragraphs have um, by default some spacing so let's just um, let's just zero the padding out and then zero the margin out and you'll see that there was um, margin above and below so there was top and uh, bottom margin. So I want to control that a little bit. So maybe I just want a few pixels on the top and but on the bottom maybe I want quite a bit more. Okay, So I have pretty much all the control that I want here um, for that and I want this to be indented a little bit and indented from the left so maybe I'll put on um, a little bit of left margin and now you can see how um, I'm gaining a lot of control here over how this looks and I think that's all I want my paragraph to look like okay alright so now um, again any future uh, paragraphs that go on the page will be formatted just like this alright the last thing I want to do is I want to format these a tags or the links and I'm gonna go here and 
oops, that's the edit button. I'm going to click the plus new CSS rule. Uh, go to the tag, and it didn't recognize the A, so I'm going to go to that A. I want to make sure it's the A tag I'm formatting, and it's going to write it down now. We're on that same document. Okay, so the A tag, or the link, automatically has an underline on it, which if I do not decide I don't want that, I can take it off. need to be a little careful about that, because people recognize links by their underlines. Um, I could change the color of this. Maybe I want it to match my headings. Okay, And I may not want to change it too much, but maybe just enough to make it look like it's part of the page. Um, Again, um, an A tag is not a block level element, so if I were to put background behind it, you can see it only goes right around that. That's an inline element, so it doesn't span the whole page. Remember when we put the background around the, put the background in the H2, the background spanned the whole width of the page. In this case, that doesn't happen. That indicates that this is an inline element. I don't think I want that background there. It's an inline element by default. Of course, we could we could tell it to be recognized as a block uh, level element, but that's for later. And I think that's all we're going to do here um, for uh, for this exercise. So you can see I've just taken um, my simple CSS and I have changed it to. Uh, using CSS, I mean I've, I've taken my simple semantic uh, HTML uh, page, so um, let me just cut this out really quick, that looked like that. I haven't changed the HTML at all. All I have added is some CSS rules to help me have more control over how the, that basic HTML looked. And you can see here's the CSS document, pretty straightforward. You can see I've written three rules. Remember how these rules work? There's a selector. The H2 is the selector. I'm selecting which um, object to act on. And then when I write each one of these declarations, each one of these things is called the declaration. And the declaration is made up of two parts. Okay. All right, those two parts. And there's the value. Um, or the attribute, that's what I meant to say. There's the attribute, there's the value. That makes up one declaration, like the H2 tag here. I've got six declarations in this one one rule with one selector. All of those declarations are acting on this one selector. And the same thing with the P tag and the A tag. Okay, that's all for this um, first introdu introduction to using CSS to redefine tags.